Okay, so I'm going to take a little break from the crazy medical martial law mind control paradigm for a minute and jump back over to the realm of quantum computing and satellite networks and such. This is from SciTechDaily.com. Quantum entanglement demonstrated aboard orbiting CubeSat. Step towards space-based global quantum network. So hopefully you know why that's interesting around here. The Spooky One, spooky spelled with a Q, CubeSat contains a miniaturized quantum instrument that creates pairs of photons with the quantum property of entanglement. The entanglement is detected in correlations of the photon's polarizations. The subheadline here, advanced poised to enable cost-effective space-based global quantum network for secure communications and more. In a critical step towards creating a global quantum communications network, researchers have generated and detected quantum entanglement on board a CubeSat nanosatellite weighing less than 2.6 kilograms and orbiting the Earth. Quote, in the future, our system could be part of a global quantum network transmitting quantum signals to receivers on Earth or on other spacecraft, said lead author Etor Vilar for the Center for Quantum Technologies at the National University of Singapore. These signals could be used to implement any type of quantum communications application from quantum key distribution for extremely secure data transmissions to quantum teleportation where information is transferred by replicating the state of a quantum system from a distance. In Optica, the Optical Society, OSA, Journal for High Impact Research, Villar, or is it VR? VR, Villar, whatever. And an international group of researchers demonstrate that their miniaturized source of quantum entanglement can operate successfully in space aboard a low resource, cost effective CubeSat that is smaller than a shoebox. CubeSats are a standard type of nanosatellite made of multiples of 10 centimeters cubic units. Progress toward a space-based global quantum network is happening at a fast pace at VR. We hope that our work inspires the next wave of space-based quantum technology missions and that new applications and technologies can benefit from our experimental findings. Miniaturizing Quantum Entanglement The quantum mechanical phenomenon known as entanglement is essential to many quantum communications applications. However, creating a global network for entanglement distribution isn't possible with optical fibers because of the optical losses that occur over long distances. Equipping small standardized satellites in space with quantum instrumentation is one way to tackle this challenge in a cost-effective manner. <laughs> As a first step, the researchers needed to demonstrate that a miniaturized photon source for the quantum entanglement could stay intact through the stresses of launch and operate successfully in the harsh environment of space within a satellite that can provide minimal energy. To accomplish this, they exhaustively examined every component of the photon pair source used to generate quantum entanglement to see if it could be made smaller or more rugged. At each stage of development, we were actively conscious of the budgets for mass, size, and power, said Villar. I keep saying it differently, whatever. By iterating the design through rapid prototyping and testing, we arrived at a robust, small form factor package for all the off-shelf components needed for an entangled photon pair source. So, <laughs> there you go. That's, yeah. Oh, I, I see. That's amazing. He totally explained it right there. That's how they did it. We iterating the design through rapid prototyping, man. Testing. We did it. The new miniaturized photon pair source consists of a blue laser diode that shines on nonlinear crystals to create pairs of photons. Achieving high quality entanglement required a complete redesign of the mounts that align the nonlinear crystals with high precision and stability. So, dude, they figured out the mounts that holds the crystals, <laughs> and that was the trick. So, now, dude, it's easy to make uh, quantumly entangled photons. Awesome. Launching into orbit. The researchers qualified their new instrument for space by testing its ability to withstand the vibration and thermal changes experienced during a rocket launch and in space operation. The photon pair source maintained a very high quality entanglement throughout the testing, and crystal alignment was preserved even after repeated temperature cycling from minus 10 degrees Celsius to 40 degrees Celsius. The researchers incorporated their new instrument into Spooky-1, a CubeSat that was deployed into orbit from the International Space Station on the 17th of June 2019. The instrument successfully generated entangled photon pairs over temperatures from 16 degrees Celsius to 21.5 degrees Celsius. That's mind-blowing. Mind-blowing. 
This demonstration showed that miniaturized entanglement technology can work while consuming little power, said Villar. This is an important step toward a cost-effective approach to the deployment of satellite constellations that can serve global quantum networks. The project was funded by Singapore's National Research Foundation. I wonder who funds them? The researchers are now working with RAL Space in the UK to design and build a quantum nanosatellite similar to Spooky One with the capabilities needed to beam entangled photons from space to a ground receiver. This is slated for demonstration aboard a 2022 mission. They are also collaborating with other teams to improve the ability of CubeSat to support quantum networks. I think I just love how casual it all is. It's amazing. You just make it sound dry and technical and boring and mur, 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 and oh yeah, okay, all right, yeah, that's pretty cool. Progress, advance. We're advancing. Fascinating technology. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto Him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped. So that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not, that when I was yet with you, I told you these things? And now ye know, what withholdeth, that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work, only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him whose coming is after the workings of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. But we are bound to give thanks all way to God for you, brethren beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth, whereunto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which ye have been taught, whether by word or our epistle. Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father, which hath loved us and hath given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace, comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work.